everyone to the next video in admission. Today we are going to take up a sum, a full length sum where we will do the journal entries, the partner's capital and balance sheet. Okay, so you ready for it? Let's start. Have a look at the sum. So I hope you have been watching all the earlier videos, the link to which is given in the description box below. This sum is taken from again GK Goel and uh, this is sum number 15 admission. As you have read the sum, you are supposed to pass journal entries, necessary accounts and new balance sheet. Also calculate the new profit sharing ratio. Alright, so here journal entries of course you will do all. Necessary accounts meaning you will have to prepare the revaluation account, partner's capital account. You also have to make the new balance sheet and the new profit sharing ratio has to be calculated. So quite a handful. So let us start it quickly. First thing, whenever you have to start with this admission thing, you should see the balance sheet very clearly. Whatever has to be, or adjustments have to be made from the balance sheet, you should pass entries for that first. Otherwise, chances are you will miss out on that. Right? So first thing we are seeing on the liability side, provident creditors, liability, no adjustment required right, right now. Provident fund, now provident fund, don't go by the word fund only. Okay, it's not like reserve fund or anything like that. It is not uh, accumulated profit of the firm. It is an external liability. Provident fund is supposed to be paid to the employees when they retire. Therefore, it's very much to be treated as an external liability, not to be distributed among the partners. Please take care of that. Then we have workman's compensation reserve. And if you have read through the sum, there is no adjustment given regarding WCR. Therefore, there is no liability against it. Hence, it's a free reserve to be distributed. And we will pass entry for that. That is number one. Then on the asset side, we can see cash at bank, Sundry debtors, provision, stock, fixed assets and profit and loss account. Profit and loss account is, yes, an unwritten of loss there. So we will have to distribute the accumulated losses also. Okay. So two entries from the balance sheet. Here you can see, first one, to write off the profit and loss account. Credit profit and loss account, it will get closed. This has been distributed to excess capital and vice capital in their profit sharing ratio which is 5 is to 3. Got it? They have been debited with the share of loss. They should be credited with the share of reserves. Workman's compensation reserve debit the entire 5800 to capital, excess capital and vice capital again in the profit sharing ratio, old ratio. All of this will be in the old ratio because these are relating to the period before admission. Correct? Now, coming to the next. Next, you should, once you have done with the balance sheet, now what you should do is come to the adjustments. And in there, of course, you will always have the new partner bringing in capital, PFG, all those entries. So, bringing in capital, PFG and the distribution of PFG should be done immediately. Okay? Z is admitted into the partnership with one share and he is bringing 20,000 as capital. So, obviously, 20,000 should be credited to Z's capital. He is also bringing in uh, 12,000 for goodwill in cash. So, that should be credited to premium for goodwill. 12,000 premium for goodwill. So, in all, he is bringing in 32,000. Debit what? Bank or cash as per the sum. So, here I have a bank account. <coughs> so, I have debited bank account. And this is for bringing in PFG and goodwill uh, capital. Now distribution of PFG. It is said that Z acquires his share entirely from X. That means who is the sacrificing partner? Only X. So the entire PFG goes to X. So you need not even calculate the sacrificing ratio here. PFG debit to excess capital 12 hours. Done. These two entries also done. Now we come to revaluation things. <clears throat> provident fund is to be increased by 5,000. Now whatever I have to debit to revaluation, I pass one entry for that. Whatever I have to credit to the revaluation account, I pass one entry for that instead of making one you know, single entry for each revaluation. <coughs> revaluation account debit 19,000. Provident fund, you have to credit because we are increasing the liability. Debtors are all good. 
Therefore, no provision is required on debtors. This is <coughs> a reduction in the liability, therefore gain for us. Provision for doubtful debts debit to revaluation account. This is a plus for us. Rest are all again losses. Stock includes 3000 of our obsolete items. Obsolete means the nahi bikega. So it's a loss to us. So write off stock by 3000. Credit the asset when it is decreasing. The value is decreasing. Creditors are to be paid 1000 more. Again, an increase in the liability. Again, a loss. Debit on losses to revaluation and creditors will be credited again because their value is increasing. Fixed assets are to, are to be revalued at 70. At 70 meaning, of course, I have to see what is given in the balance sheet. Balance sheet shows fixed asset at 80,000. So that means there's a fall in the value by 10,000. So always remember the valuation should be debited with the increase or decrease in the value of things. So here fixed assets should be credited with 10,000. Okay. All of these are losses to me. Total that and debited to revaluation 19,000. A revaluation account has been debited with 19 and credited with 600. Therefore, what is the difference? The difference is 80,400. Right. So, if at all you need to prepare the revaluation account, obviously you need to prepare a revaluation which I have missed here. Please make a revaluation account all right and whatever you have debited here you should write here like to provident fund to stock to creditors to fixed assets okay all these amounts will be coming here together individually okay and this and whatever I have credited here should come here by provision for doubtful debt 600. Therefore, by excess capital and vice capital. I am distributing the loss here. 11,500 goes to X, 6,900 goes to Y. And you will total it up and close your revaluation account here like this. Okay. Now, the valuation account, of course, the closing, journal entry, many students miss. Please do not miss that. You have done this and this. Of course, the valuation account is still open. Please close this, the same entry for closing by transferring the loss to partner's capital. We have debited. These are the journal entries. Now, you make the partner's capital account. Obviously, from here, we start with the balance brought down. If it's a credit balance, please bring it here. X and Y, it is given in the balance sheet, 70,000 and 31,000. Balance brought down. Then, wherever you are seeing any change in capital, any account related, any journal entry related to capital, you should post it here. Yes, here we can see that it is debited, partner's capital account is debited, so we have put it here to profit and loss account 159. Then we are crediting here partner's capital account by workman's compensation fund 36252175. Here again capital, Z's capital, by bank, put it into Z's capital. That is what is uh, this capital brought in. This is PFG is going to excess capital only, so I debit PFG, 12,000 goes to excess capital. Here nothing. This one, revaluation, we are debiting it to revaluation, this and this. Partners capital account debited. So, yes, if post kardena around se, journey into the hai, correct? Now, apart from that, off, after all this, you will total up and balance. You will find out balancing figures. These are the balancing figures. You will write here two balance carry down and close the capital account. Clear? New profit sharing ratio we've already done, but still I have done it for you. Old ratio minus the sacrifice will give you the new ratio. Z is coming up with 1 8th share which is taking from X. So X's old share was 5 by 8. From there I should subtract 1 8. What is he left with? 4 by 8. Y is not sacrificing anything so his share is intact as 3 by 8. And Z is having <coughs> 1 8th share. So what is the ratio? 4 this to 3 is to 1. That's the new ratio. Now all we are left with is the balance sheet. Okay. So let us make that. And this is for a closer view for the ones who 
could not read the board very clearly. So before I rub it off, I thought I will just, you know, zoom it up for you. So your balance sheet is ready. Now what you have to do is uh, for you know making the new balance sheet post admission is quickly check the old balance sheet. Whatever figures are there, if it is changing, meaning if we have revalued, distributed all those things, then we will have to change accordingly. Otherwise, the figures which are unchanged, unaltered, will just simply be picked up from the old balance sheet and put it here. Right? Now, first thing, balance sheet, you will write of X, Y and Z, including the new partner, as at, now after the date of the admission, meaning on the date of admission, it is 1st April 2020. The old balance sheet was on 31st March 2020. So do not put the date as 31st March because the admission and the post admission balance sheet will be prepared on 1st of April. Partners, capital account. The closing balances, we have just put it here, right? So here this is X, Y and Z. These were the closing balances, the total has been put here. Then we saw creditors. Creditors were given as 15,000 in the old balance sheet. They have increased by 1,000. So 16,000, the new altered figure. Provident fund. Provident fund also increased by 5,000. So it is now at 15,000. So you will now write the increased figure or decreased figure, the changed figure. Okay, fine. Then fixed assets had gone down by 10,000, so 70,000. Sunday debtors, provision is not required. We have closed provision, so it's at the book value. Stock has gone down by 3,000 from 25 to 22. And bank, 5,000 was there. It has increased by 32. What 32? Yes, the Z's capital and premium brought in. Okay, 20,000 and 12,000. So this comes to 37,000. So if you have adjusted all of this, obviously workman's compensation fund and profit and loss account had been written off. There is nothing there, so this does not appear in the new balance sheet. So your total should tie here. This is how we make a full complete admission sum. Alright? So practice such sum, children. Please do uh, you know feel free to write comments and ask your doubts, clarify your doubts. And uh, that bring brings us to the end of the video. Please do like, subscribe and share my channel. Thank you so much.